All right, everyone. Um, welcome to another class. Uh, like all of them, if you're not already signed up to receive the links to join these meetings, or if you want uh, notifications as far as what we'll be talking about, um, video recaps, blog articles about what we, we talk about here, you can always sign up using the QR code here. Click the link I'm about to paste in the chat right now. Let's do that right now. And I'm sure most of you guys already are, but if not, I, that's how you can get access to all of that cool stuff. Or you can always email me at hello at caramelcocaine.com and let me know if you have any questions, if you um, are having difficulties with that or just want to book a one-on-one -on -one in general or anything techie, uh, you can always reach out to me. There's never a dumb question. Um, yeah. So you can scan this, click the link in the chat or just... Um, call, text, email me. <clears throat> Before we get started, uh, you can interrupt me at any time. You can raise your hand. You can ask questions in the chat. Um, I often have polls uh, during at the beginning of or maybe at the end of these uh, Zoom meetings. Uh, you can always engage in those and, you know, give your feedback or, or answers to fun questions. It helps me uh, make these Tech Tuesdays a lot better and um, more fun and engaging. So make sure to participate to those. Let me see here. I don't know if I made a poll for today. Let's see. Mm -hmm. I did not. Cool. All right. There's no poll today. We'll do yesterday's poll. <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, last Tech Tuesday's poll. I see some new people in here. Uh, if you could live in any fictional home, which one would you choose? And we're going to keep going while you guys answer that icebreaker. All right. Welcome, uh, Florida. Nice to see you. Thank right. you. Right on time. Hmm. Last time we didn't get any... Uh, Hogwarts school. So I guess uh, someone does like Harry Potter after all. That's cool. All right, let's go next. So last Tech Tuesday, we talked about setting up um, a link tree, which is a really awesome uh, tool you can utilize to store all of the resources and content you, you have, um, whether that be your social media website, um, your social media handles on all of the platforms, um, a personal website you have, you can share links to market reports, search alerts, a bunch of cool things. And it can be a little cumbersome, um, you know, to remember all of those different things that people you work with might want to know. So by having a link tree, you can store all of those resources there. So whenever you're asked for your Instagram website, a market report, uh, a video you posted somewhere, um, you can always just share that one link and be sure that you're sharing everything you do have to offer. Okay. Linktree is an amazing tool. Uh, we did, uh, we talked about that last time and I have made a video uh, on that that I posted earlier today. Okay. And we'll watch about 20 seconds of it just so you guys can see. But today we'll be talking about um, KV Core. Okay. So I want to take it back a little bit. Uh, talk about some basic things. We always get brand new people who are not so familiar with the CRM. And uh, as an EXP agent, we actually get it for free. And it's a very, very great tool and very powerful tool that would otherwise cost um, north of, I think, $400 or $500, $500 a month if you did not get it for free through the brokerage. So it's, uh, it's a good idea to learn how to use it and and take advantage of that. So we'll be talking about just the important uh, section, the CRM section. I'll take you through um, everything, all the buttons, what they do and what everything means. Okay, so that way you can get started nurturing all the leads you have in there. Um, a great video to watch uh, after this one, or I mean, uh, a great resource to check out after this one is um, uh, how to import your contacts, okay? For those of you guys who don't already have your contacts imported into KV Core. So I've made a lot of videos on that, and I will continually um, um, keep talking about that in 
upcoming meetings, but I do have plenty of resources about that. Okay, and if you have any questions on that, you can always reach out, call, text, email, or book a one-on-one -on, -one on the website. Okay, so this is what we'll be going through today. It's going to be jam-packed with a lot of great information. And so this is uh, the video I posted uh, about Linktree. I know a lot of us still do not have our Linktree set up. I still get questions about it. So I have posted a um, short, well-edited video that takes you through step-by-step -step on how to um, uh, make that happen. Uh, so you can go ahead and check that out on the YouTube channel. I'll, uh, you can access that through the website, actually, that I put in the chat. Um, and yeah, let me actually play 15 seconds of it. That way you know kind of how everything is, is organized and, and you have an idea of how the new style of videos are going to be on the YouTube channel. How to use Linktree to organize all of your social links, have better lead conversions, and make your life as a real estate agent much, much easier. My name is Karamoko from Karamoko Homes, and today we're going to be talking about all of those topics. By the end of this video, you should know exactly what a link tree is and what it does. You should have one ready made if you follow along with me step by step. We'll be building one together, and I'll also show you how to share your link tree. So we'll be talking about it all. So this is how I'm making the new videos because I do understand a lot of you do not have time to sit through an hour long live stream with, you know, um plenty of information you might already know or or maybe it's moving a little too slow so now i'm making you know shorter videos that are straight to the point that take you step by step uh that way you can get right to the information you need um and yeah get business taken care of so this is now on the youtube channel okay so by the end of today's meeting uh, you should have a firm understanding on what the uh, about the KV Core CRM section, because KV, KV Core has plenty of different sections: the listings tab, the CRM tab, the marketing tab. But today we'll only be focusing on the CRM section. Okay. Uh, you should have an understanding of what hashtags are. Uh, we'll briefly talk about search alerts and campaigns. We won't go too deep into those. I've talked about those before. Uh, there are videos on those, but yet again, we'll still keep talking about them in the future. Um, yeah, so the timeline and past interactions, all of this is part of, you know, the CRM section. Okay, we'll be talking about all of that and also how to nurture leads individually uh, through that CRM section. Okay, uh, so let's get started. Do we have any questions i know it's a little early uh yeah so feel free to raise your hands or anything if you have any questions um there's no stupid questions there's no dumb questions so just let's all learn together so let me go ahead and open up kv core let's see here <clears throat> kv core All right, let me move my face down here. Awesome. So when you open up KV Core, this is always a screen you will see. It'll take you to your dashboard. Uh, when I say sections, you know, CRM section or, or listing section, this is the area of KV Core I'm referring to. I'm going to zoom into this right here. So this left-hand side, this tab right here on the left, this is what I'm referring to when I say sections. And today we'll be uh, talking about the CRM tab, which you see right here, the smart CRM tab. I'm going to zoom out. So when you log into KV Core, this is what you will see. This is a dashboard. Uh, so I'm going to click on the C smart CRM tab right here. Okay. If you don't see this um, uh, section uh, on your on your end, it's probably because it's collapsed. So you want to click on the three bars at the top left of the screen, and it will expand, um, you know, all the menu options here. And then you could go to the Smart CRM tab and click on that to get to the screen where I am right now. Uh, welcome, Cecilia. Nice to see you. Thank you. Let's get started. Awesome. 
Okay, so yes, this is the Smart CRM tab, and uh, there's plenty of um, different things you see on the screen. Uh, we're going to go step by step, and I'll go as detailed as I can. And if you have any questions along the way, do not be afraid. Just raise your hand or put anything in the chat, okay? This is where you will be doing most of the lead nurturing in KV Core, uh, the Smart CRM tab and the Marketing tab. So it's very important to know the Smart CRM tab, um, you know, through and through, because you can do a lot of great things here, automate a lot of processes, um, get people on campaigns, set them up on search alerts, set them market reports. So if you don't uh, learn anything else, just know how to work the Smart CRM section. Okay. So once we get here, um, at the top, uh, you don't need to worry about this three bars. Again, this is just to expand, and, you know, collapse the menu. You can search for specific contacts within your smart CRM uh, by clicking on the little magnifying glass. You can type anyone's name and then they will populate um, um, once you click on their name. Uh, very simple stuff. Marketplace, this is not part of the CRM section. This will just always be up there. Uh, this is where you go to uh, buy extra features for KV Core. Um, but I wouldn't recommend going there unless you have a firm understanding of how everything that's already available to you works. So I haven't had to use the marketplace myself. There's a lot of great things there, but you want to make sure you fully utilize and know how to utilize everything you do have at your disposal for free. Okay. The quick actions tab. Uh, is what it says you can quickly do certain actions such as add a contact uh, you can you know add a quick call if you want to place a call to someone you can add a note uh, you can add a task for yourself something to do you know later down the line you can go ahead and create blog articles through here or send a quick email through here okay so if you need to do something quick you can click on that blue button at the top right here and then choose which action you'd like to perform. Next up, we have the mail uh, icon. So if you have a Gmail account connected to KV Core, you can actually have your email show up on here. So you don't have to log into your Gmail on the side. You can have everything in one neat place. So if you have an email you solely use for real estate, this would be a great place to um, connect that. Okay, and I think they only let you connect Outlook and Gmail. So uh, hopefully you have one of those. If not, it's no biggie. You can always have your um, email opened up on an another tab, but you can check all of that here. So it's a one great way to integrate everything. Next up, we have the notification tab. So right here, this will tell you all of the tasks that are, that are due. So this is anything you set for yourself. Or maybe sometimes there are tasks within smart campaigns you assign to people, okay? So you can see everything that's coming up here, everything that's past due, due today, due, you know, tomorrow, or anything upcoming. And then you have the show recent activity uh, button. So this just shows you what every, you know, what all you've been doing or what all's been happening Um on the CRM. So if there's any automated tasks that are being done, you can always come here to see, you know, if those have been successfully uh, completed or not. So yeah, you can see all those activities by clicking on this button. And then the show chat, this refers to your KV Core app. So if you have a KV Core app and someone, you know, chats you through the app, you'll be able to see that here. It's a fairly new um, feature that a lot of people are not using quite yet. At least I'm, I'm not hearing a lot of people, um, you know, utilizing it, but we did talk about it briefly on one of the, uh, one of our past meetings. It's a great resource. It's free. You can share it with, you know, all of your leads, friends, family, and they can do property searches on there. So whenever they message you through the app, okay. this is where it'll pop up. I um, was on, I'm not on a Zoom for me, it's a recording that I was watching. Yeah, but oh. it's, it's been crazy to it. Super uh, crazy. Yuxandi, your mic's not muted. <laughs> Nothing, they're all falling apart, I thought. 
Okay. All right. Sorry about that, guys. Um, yeah, so this is where you can check all of those interactions that happen between, you know, people using your app and, and yourself through the KV Core website. And then last but not least, uh, when you tap on your name at the top right, you get more menu options. You can access your, um, you know, KV Core website. Uh, this is the link you use to get to your app or you can at least share this link with people so that they can download your app. You can change up your you know, profile preferences, whether that be your profile photo, your email signature, your bio, you can do all of that through here, okay? But now let's get to the um, meat and, and potatoes. Looks like we have a question. Uh, what is the question? It doesn't say your name, sorry. Oh yeah, uh, the quick question is, um, which yes. link is better to share on Linktree? Would it be the app? KV Core link or the original? Uh, when you say original, what do you mean? The original? Just the regular KV Core link or is the oh. link better? Uh, if by KV Core link, you mean your KV Core website, uh, I would do both actually. Just put website and then just have another button that says, you know, download my app today. So right, thank you. I would do both. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so just generally speaking, I would just put as many links on your link tree as possible, organize them properly. Some people might be comfortable having an app versus always having to go to a website and vice versa. Okay, just like uh, all your social media, don't just put Facebook. If you have an Instagram, LinkedIn, Snapchat, and all of that, you want to make sure all your resources are in one place and organize them neatly so that anyone can scroll through and see what all you have to offer. So yeah, that, that's a great question. Uh, all right, so down here now, uh, we're going to talk about all of this other stuff. <laughs> so up here, if you notice, I have a bunch of different sections I can click on here. You guys might not have this. Uh, let me see here. Yes, you're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, any questions, raise your hands or write it in the chat, guys. I'll be checking that every now and then. Uh, so down here, uh, you, if you notice, I have plenty of little bubbles here that are labeled differently. So these are shortcuts you can create to um, a sp to specific contacts within your database. Okay, and you th these are filters here. So, um, okay, I'm gonna go step by step. I really don't want to lose you guys. So we're gonna get to the filters very very soon. Um, right after we talk about you know, the individual contacts. But all this is up here is just shortcuts to different contacts within my database. So if I click on the everyone filter, it'll just show me everyone in my database. Uh, fake contacts, for the purposes of these Tech Tuesdays, I just have a bunch of randomly, uh, random contacts I used to, you know, um, show you guys how to do certain things. So I can just click on fake contacts and it will automatically apply a filter that only shows me people I've labeled as fake contacts or, you know, friends and family. I can sort through all of those people uh, really quickly by clicking here. So what you see at the top here is just shortcuts to um, filtered, you know, filtered contacts. So well, I'll show you how to do that uh, very soon if we have time. But this is just an extra thing uh, that can make your life a little easier if you use KV Core a lot. So if we go down a little bit more, so if you notice here, you have a green button at the top right that says add contact. So you can add a new contact to your database by clicking here. Or remember, you can click on the quick actions tab also to just add a contact. So this bar you see up here, no matter what tab you're in or what section you're in, you will see the stop bar right here. So this bar is not exclusive to the CRM tab, okay? Um, but you can add a contact here and also the quick actions. And if we go down a little bit more, uh, this is where we see, you know, the filters uh, button. So for eventually, as you start putting more and more contacts into KV Core, uh, you might want to start using filters because you might not want to see everyone at all times. Maybe on a specific day, you want to focus on specific contacts. And in order to find them, you don't want to have to scroll through thousands of contacts or maybe hundreds of contacts. So leveraging filters, 
uh, can help you, you know, only show you the people you want to see. So for example, okay, if you notice right here, I have a, you know, couple contacts that are listed here. And instead of me having to scroll through every single person, uh, let me see here. Looks like we got someone else joining us. So instead of um, having to scroll through each of these, you know, different contacts, uh, you can go to the filters tab by me clicking here. It'll give me different criteria. I want to filter all of my contacts by. OK, so whatever I check here or I can open up these, you know, drop downs too to be more specific with my search criteria, just like uh, on the CRMLS, if you want to look for a property, you want to put, you know, certain criteria in there to only filter and show you what you're looking for. This is the same thing, but just on KV Core. Okay, this narrows down, narrows down your search. So uh, on here, if I remove this, um, it, this is only showing here because I've clicked this shortcut. So let me actually get out of here. I'll clear all my filters. And then we'll click on filters again. So through here, you can, let's say we only wanted to show people in my sphere of influence, or at least people have marked as sphere within KV Core. I can check the sphere box right here. I'll actually zoom in so you guys can see. So if I only wanted to see people who have labeled as sphere, I can check this box. And then once I've checked that box, I can go all the way down and then apply that filter. So when I click here now, KV Core is going to refresh the um, um, the the list of contacts that it's showing on the right hand side. And if you notice, now we only see sphere. Okay, so this is one way you can filter through people, and you can combine uh, you know different things you're looking for. So maybe I only want to see people who are in my sphere, and are also uh, uh, people who are in my sphere, and also people who are new leads. I can check that. And maybe I also want to include people who have closed. I can check that, you know, and then click on apply filters again. KV Core will refresh. And now will only show me uh, anyone who matches um, these criteria that I've checked. OK, and you have even more options. So I can click on um, assigned users. Uh, you most likely won't have to use this one a lot. But let's go to the contact details. There are more. There's more on there that we can use to filter. So, um, let's say I wanted to only show people who are in my sphere of influence. So I'm going to check that, and then we can go down and also filter, narrow down our search. So people who are in my sphere who are also buyers, I can check that. People who are in my sphere who, um, you know, have a specific hashtag or were generated from a specific source, you know, whether they came through Google, uh, through my uh, agent website, through the app, you know, people who have manually added, you can narrow this down, um, you know, as much as you want and in different uh, ways. And you can even narrow it down to people who have a phone, uh, a phone number on file, people who don't have a phone number on file. So you can get very creative with these filters and then once you click apply on the right hand side, KV Core will refresh and then only show you people who match those criteria you've set. So right now I've done people who are in my sphere and people who have also labeled as buyers. So if I was to click on any of these people here, um, it will show that their sphere, as you can see here, their status says sphere. And then within their contact details, it will show that they're also buyers, okay? I'm a little bit scared to open up these contacts because I upload these on YouTube and <laughs> YouTube has flagged me a few times for showing too many people's, you know, emails and phone numbers, which you shouldn't do in the first place. So I'll only open um, the fake contacts here. I'll get to that in a second. Uh, I think I saw a hand being raised. Cecilia, question? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Hold on. I just threw a blank. <laughs> Oh my gosh. No worries. Okay. It was about. Yes. And let me see. What was it? Oh my gosh. How embarrassing. I just. No, not at all. Blank. Um, it was regarding. Uh, I think it was further down. You were, if you could go. Uh, there. Okay. Let's see. 
the was it one of the filters you had questions about yeah i think it was i'm so sorry i just no worries it once i remember i <laughs> okay I not a problem at all just raise your hand and uh okay, yeah we'll do. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. uh looks like you also have a question george i do sir thank you good evening yes um, on the question, right where you have your, your cursor right now on the friends and family tabs and the fake yes. contacts, can you show me how you created those tabs? And let's say, for example, on your screen, you have David Benya, John, and Art. What right. if I wanted to move those three guys to one specific, uh, let's say the new tab is called uh, best friends. Like those are the guys that are just like, hey guys, work is done, right? right. But if you make one of those tabs and I want only those three guys in there, how would I do that? That's a great question. So if you notice on, on the left-hand side here, how I've been filtering through the people, you can create a shortcut to that filter. So let's say I just wanted to save this configuration I have here, only people who are within my sphere and are also buyers. So in instead of me having to do this every single time when I wanna you know sort through all those people, and just click apply filters. Instead, you can click save filters. So when you save the filter, this is where you give it a name basically. So uh, you can call this best friends, okay? So now uh, when you click, uh, when you switch this on, pin this filter uh, as a quick link at top of CRM and you click save new filter. Let me click this away. There we go. So now it will populate up here as one of the shortcuts so it's not that you can just drag and drop people from in and out of these boxes these are just here as shortcuts to configurations you've had if that makes sense absolutely okay yeah, yeah. thank right. you for sure but there is a great way to do what you just said and uh, we're going to get to that very very soon that was a great question but here up top this only shows saved configuration so maybe i can i want to save a, a shortcut to people who are uh, let's say people who have a phone and an email on file and also fall into the new lead um you know they 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 they're labeled as a new lead on my system so instead of me having to do this every single time i want to see people who meet that criteria i can just check everything here once and then instead of you know applying and then doing my work and leaving, I can just save this new filter and then just you know give it a name and then save it again. And now if we go through my list here, it should populate uh somewhere in here. Yeah, so that's how you do it. I might have reached reached the max, or maybe <laughs> there's no more space, but you get the point. You you can do the these um uh, create these quick shortcuts for you to access instead of coming here every single time to filter through all of your contacts. Okay, I think I uh, have uh, another question. Yeah, before you go. Um, yeah. I did miss, if you go down a little bit more. Uh-huh. That list, how'd you get the bottom list? The, the, the what, I'm sorry? Pass phone, no phone. Oh, right here. Okay. So you have multiple drop downs within the filter tab. So all I went, all I did is click on contact details right here. Okay. So you can expand and collapse, you know, more options, but you can find that under contact details. Okay. Got it. Thanks. Awesome. Awesome. Um, Cecilia, your hand's still up. Do you remember the, the question? Yes. Awesome. I do. <laughs> Okay, on those tabs that you have up top, the filter, you know how you filtered yes. and saved it? Okay, yes. if I get any, no, when I get um, new contacts. Yes. Um, <laughs> um, I do I, I do a lot of hashtags that nice. I like. So, so let's say I identify that new lead, right? Yes. Does it, go, does it automatically go into those tabs or do I have to refresh? I mean, do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, that's a good question also, because sometimes it's tough for me to explain the difference between filters and hashtags. But um, now, because I've explained what filters are and how to save them up top, it'll uh -huh. be a little bit easier to understand that. So a filter, think of it as something that's dynamic. It's always going to check for 
all of your contacts if they meet a certain criteria and then show show you that uh, those results but a hashtag is something you manually set on a specific contact mm -hmm. and they won't necessarily populate um Oh, how do you say this? A hashtag is static. It'll only show you people you've labeled under a certain hashtag. So they won't automatically go into one of these boxes, for example, if they don't match all of the criteria as well. Um, did okay, that, so did that make any sense? Maybe. Yeah, so they have okay. to, it, so it has to match the criteria for it to automatically go into those filters. Exactly. That, okay, got it. Okay. Exactly. Yes. Okay. So. Uh, to to sum it all up, if you can have twenty different hashtag with a con on a single contact, but the filters will all always go through all of the contacts and check for specific things. So if the specific person you're referring to has a hashtag of you know best friend, um, and you have a filter called best friend, they won't go on there. They will not populate under that filter uh, shortcut. But oh, okay. yeah. So it will only check for what you set here, basically. It'll check for, if is this person a new lead? Is this person a buyer? Uh, do they have a phone number? Do they have an email? If so, they belong in whatever you name that filter. So that's the difference between hashtag. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, and also to add on to that, within the filters, you can also add people with a specific hashtag to make it even more confusing. <laughs> So the filter can also look through all your contacts, see if they have a hashtag of, let's just say a friend. I think I have a hashtag called friend. So now within this filter I'm about to create, it'll check for anyone in my system who not only is labeled as a new lead, also labeled as a buyer and has a hashtag of friend and has a phone number and has an email, okay? Mm -hmm. So now what this means is, if there's anyone in my database that has the hashtag friend but doesn't have the, a phone number on file, they will not populate under that quick filter. Okay. It has to match all of this for it to populate up here. Got it. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Perfect. Thank uh, you. You're welcome. Do we have any other questions so far? I have one. Yeah. So when you um, enter the contact, where do you put the hashtag? um great question um actually i think that's up next <laughs> so uh is there any questions for the filters before we move on to that how to create one how to save them up here um are we all looking good awesome and if there's anything leave it in the chat or raise your hand okay so this is how you create filters uh you can save them up top by clicking save filter once you've you know, put on, put all of your criterias, or if you just want to do a one-time search, you know, with the filter, you could just click apply filter, and then it will show you all the results um, that that will yield. And when you're done with filters, you could just click clear uh, next to the filters apply button. And that way, you know, there's no current filters being applied. But if you notice that the filter button is green, that tells you that you're currently filtering through contacts. Okay, so it'll look like this. So I'm gonna clear this and then we're gonna go, um, we're gonna move on and I'll show you uh, the hashtags and all the great stuff. So let's get these contacts. So I'm gonna go to my fake contacts because I'm uh, scared YouTube's gonna flag me. So let's go to Amy, okay? So right here, you get to see all of the different contacts in your database. So if we go to Amy, for example, um, you're going to see a lot of this when you get familiar with KV Core. You're going to get, you, you need to get familiar with this window because this, these windows basically go through all of the contact specific information, where they fall in the client journey in the middle right here, whether you categorize them as sphere, prospect, lead, et cetera. You'll be able to see their email, phone number, address, what hashtags uh, they have whether they're a buyer, seller, renter, and this is all you know, stuff you manually label them as, or you can have the system automatically label them based on how you have it set up, okay? But for the purposes of you know, this Tech Tuesday to be as simple as possible, when you add a new lead, you are in control um, 
you are in control uh, as far as what you label every client or every lead as. So if I wanted to change Amy to Sphere right now, that's something I can manually do by just clicking this box. It'll ask me if I'm sure. And then now Amy became uh, you know, part of my sphere of influence because I just checked this status. So th these are things you can manually change. So we're going to go box by box. I'll explain every single box here and what they all do. And if you have any questions, raise your hand um, and uh, or put anything in the chat. So very easy, very simple. At the top left here, we'll get started here. You're going to have the leads name whenever you click on them. And again, the way I got here, it was just clicking on a leads name. So I'm just clicking on Amy. She's not a real person, but this is the first person I see. So you'll see their name, their phone number, and their email. Okay. Um, and then you'll see their name again. You'll have a little pencil icon in this box. When you click on it, you can change those details. Okay. So if you want to change Amy's name to something else, maybe it wasn't Amy after all, you can come back here, click on her name click on the pencil and then just change it up and click save. Okay. And then right below, you'll be able to see Amy's phone number, Amy's email and Amy's address. Okay. So if these are not accurate, you can always click on the little pencil, change that information and click save. Okay. It's very important that you try and get as much uh, detail from all of the leads you have on your system, because later on, when you sign them up for market reports, or uh, search alerts, or you know, newsletters. You want to make sure you have emails on file. You know, accurate emails. You want to make sure their phone number works uh, if you want to put them on a campaign that has you know automatic texting. So when you put leads on there, always try to ask them for the information you might be missing. So if I only had a number from Amy and no email on my next interaction with Amy, I could say, hey, Amy, do you have a good email address uh, that I can use to send you important information about your, your property value or, you know, what's going on in your neighborhood? I'll maybe send you a market report. So having all of that information allows you to do a lot of great things and nurture leads, you know, even better. So you can see all that information here and also change it. Now down here, by default, you can assign, you know, whatever, uh, I'll call this status, whatever status a lead is. By default, I think KV Core will label everyone as a buyer. But let's say I talk to Amy and she actually is a seller. So I'm just going to click seller right here. And Amy will also be labeled as a seller within the system. So Amy can be multiple things at once. Okay, if Amy is only a seller, I can uncheck buyer and it'll go from... Uh, green to not green. Uh, if Amy wants to sell and buy another property, that could put Amy in both of those buckets so I can check buyer again. If Amy is a renter and wants to buy, you can just leave it as buyer. Or if Amy is an agent, you know, you could just click on H, uncheck the rest. So what you see here is another way you can filter through contacts. So remember when we went to the filters tab, I could check on buyer, seller, renter, and whatnot. This is what KB Core is looking for. So if I had agent checked here, Amy wouldn't show up on you know uh, the 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 results when I checked for buyers only. Okay, so this is what this means. So I'm gonna change Amy back to buyer and remove agent. Looks like we have a uh, question here. Does KB Core have the cap capability to run newsletters? Um, Yes, KV Core can. Well, when you say run newsletters, do you mean you can send emails to people monthly and build your own newsletter? Or does your question, do you mean, uh, can KV Core make the newsletters for you? I don't know if you want to uh, uh, put more details in your question in the chat or, or raise your hand if you want. But yes, you can send newsletters through KV Core. Uh, you could plug, put uh, blog articles on there too. Um, there's a lot of great things you can do, but um, yeah, there's not enough details in your question. Sorry. Uh, yes, yeah, so you can change people's um, status here. Okay, any questions so far? Okay, no worries. You're welcome. 
So yeah, I've sent newsletters uh, through KV Core. I think I've also had a Tech Tuesday meeting where I actually walked you through building a newsletter. I might do another one of those because they're very important and uh, they're really great when it comes to you know launching smart campaigns and and putting people on a drip. You know, so newsletters are great. I think uh, question from George. Yes, sir. Sorry to bug you again. Um, no. <laughs> on this part, on this part of the uh, of of the Tech Tuesday, where you're showing us how to use, you know, buy or seller and how to categorize. Let's say with Amy, um, what if I do have one of those days where I run into multiple people? Let's say theoretically, let's say a couple yeah. dozen people, and I want to categorize them. Would I have to go in there and manually put, punch and poke at all twenty four of them until I put them right where I want them? Is that essentially what has to happen that's although, although they're all new contacts yeah. but some might be buyers some might be sellers so i would have to literally do it manually for each one mm, e, well no well actually that's a great question because you can check multiple contacts let's say we were to check these three amy uh, okay, Alicia, okay. and ezekiel but i don't know if that specific uh you can change that specific um uh, uh status because you can change people's uh you know whether their sphere close or whatnot but i don't think you can change whether they're buyer seller or that's a great okay. question yeah i'll i'll try and, and figure that out i never had to do that before but that's i'm yeah, sure you could do it because <laughs> i have a page in uh, a, a job i used to have where yeah. i ran into literally about maybe easily about 200 people that i worked right. with over the years <laughs> Right. And I thought, hey, guys, look what I'm doing. And some were like, hey, how cool. But then I right. thought, how am I going to categorize? I mean, I mean, I'll do it, right? But my boy, I'm going to be here a while. <laughs> no, <laughs> so. you're right. And you know, I it, the way I go about doing that is through hashtags. Because you can have a buyer hashtag for as many people as you want. So I could just select all these people or just select the ones that I want to categorize as buyers go to more actions and then add a hashtag. So now I can search through that hashtag and see all the buyers within my list. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to get to hashtags right now, but that's how I would go about it. But there's no way to change this specific section right here. If, um, you know, to directly answer your question. Not that I know of at least. Okay. Um, any other questions, anybody before we move on? This is your moment. All questions welcome. Chat, raise your hand. Um, all right. So yes, right here you can categorize. You know whether people are buyer, seller, renter, vendors, or you know, or an agent. Uh, this will not affect how KV Core works. This is just for your own records mostly, so that when you open up a contact, you kind of see where they fall. But in the same way you can label people, you know, buyer, seller, or renters, you can just create hashtags through which to, you know, sort people even further. Okay, so basically what a hashtag is, it's, um, well, yes, it's a way for you to label people, but you can get as creative uh, as you want with hashtags. So let's say someone is a buyer. So there can be multiple different types of buyers you can have first time home buyers you can have uh you know investors you can have uh, people in particular situations and maybe you want you might want to market to all of those niche groups you know within the buyer category differently um so you, this is where hashtags would come in so i can maybe label amy as first time home buyer just like this and then when I click on that, Amy will now have this hashtag called first time home buyer. Okay. So what that allows me to do is if I close out of this page right here and uh, I go to, um, I'll clear my filters here and I'm going to click on my filters again. So remember you can search, you can filter through all of your contacts um, pretty much in any way you want. One of those ways is by hashtags. So I'm, I don't care about people's contact status. Right now, all I care about is sorting through all of my contacts and seeing 
everyone that matches that hashtag I created for first time home buyers. So what I'll do is I'll open up the filter step just like I did now. Go to the contact details because that's where you find that. And I can skip this all together. OK, and we're going to go straight to hashtag. So if I type first time home buyer here and as you type, it should auto populate sometimes. Oh, first time home buyer. There you go. So you're going to type that in there. You're going to select it. And then if you scroll all the way down and you apply that filter. Just like that, Amy now populates. OK, but if I had also checked prospect and I clicked apply filter, Amy will no longer show because Amy doesn't meet all of these criteria. So you can utilize hashtags to just hone in specifically on um, what exactly that buyer situation is. So if I uncheck prospect here, all I will see is people have personally labeled first time home buyer. And I'm going to click apply again. And then there's Amy. OK, and to make this process even more streamlined and, you know, much more efficient, you could just save this filter like we did at the beginning. So I'll click save filter and then I'll give it a name that says first time home buyer. Like this, and I'll pin it so I could see it at the top, save this new filter. Um, and then I'll, I'm going to refresh my whole KB core here. I think that's why the other one didn't pop up. So if I go right here, there it is. First time home buyer. So now every time I want to see all the people in my database that are first time home buyers, I could just click here and it'll run through that, you know, programming I just did and show me everyone with that hashtag. So that's how hashtags can be of use to you and, and, and help you a lot, make you do things much faster. Um, question, I think, uh, Cecilia? Yeah, can we have, can I um, search? The, well, in terms of searching with hashtags, yeah. can I search more than one hashtag? Because I have some with the hashtag city, you mm -hmm. know, like, um, in the hashtags, uh, um, uh, city, uh, hashtag Spanish, hashtag, you know, so can we add multiple hashtags? Definitely. Let's do okay. one together. Yeah. So if I open up my filters again and mm -hmm. I go to contact details once more, this time, maybe I want to show first time home buyers again. Let me type that first time home buyer. And maybe I also want to show my sphere of influence. So I created a hashtag called SOI, uh, I believe, or maybe I spelled it all, sphere of influence. No, I'm just going to type one I know I have for sure, friends and family. So just like that, you see, as I type these hashtags, it will flip this bar to or. So that means it's just going to show me anyone with a friends and family hashtag or anyone that also has first time home buyer. But if I want to filter uh, and show people who have all of those hashtags, so now this means I will only see someone who is not only a friend and a family or a family member, but also is a first time home buyer. So you have the option here, okay? So I'm okay, going to leave perfect. it at the point. And then once again, you can just apply that filter. Or if you know you'll always be filtering and you know wanting to see those people, you can save it like we did. So I'm just going to apply it. And then it should show me Amy up top here, along with everyone else who has the friends and family hashtag. It'll show you down here uh, also a preview. So this enables us to do a lot of cool stuff. So because now it's only showing us the people we want to see, you can just check this box at the top next to first name that will select all those people. And if you go to uh, the actions next to the um, search bar here, you can mass email all these people. You can mass text all these people. You can send video message to all these people at once. You could click more action and add a task that's related to all these people I just selected. Mm -hmm. You can add a hashtag automatically to all these people. You know, you could do so many things just by being able to filter through contacts. So yeah, if you wanted to send a message specifically to first time home buyers, filter through first time home buyers and then click mass email and it'll tell you um 
if some of them can't receive it and why. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Looks like six out of 71 were unsubscribed and et cetera. You'll see all that. Mm -hmm. You could just type up your email and then just send. And just like that, you've sent an email to however many people I just selected, you know, seven, 71 contacts instead of me going through one by one, mm -hmm. sending these emails to all these people. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't send it to like junk or spam. It doesn't. So if you add anyone into KV Core who unsubscribed or their email bounced before, maybe you sent them an email and, and never reached their inbox, KV mm -hmm. Core will remember that for you and will not attempt to send it again. Okay. 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 So yeah. Okay. And people who are also on the do not call registry, it'll scan all that for you. Uh, so you you can rest assured that you're not breaking any rules. So oh, yeah. Okay. Tell me again. It, so it, it goes through the system and identifies whether the phone number is in. Do not in, in a do not call in, registry. Yeah. Oh, it yeah. does. It does. It does. Okay. So it will not send to people who pop up on those lists. Okay. Okay. So that's okay. some really cool stuff KV Core does for you. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. Any questions about that? Hashtags, filtering. What's the difference? Hopefully you guys understand what the difference between hashtag and filters are now. It's They share a lot of similarities, but you can see how you can use both differently. Okay. I'm going to go back into the fake contacts here. I'll show you some more stuff. If my KV core will load, there we go. So let's go back to Amy. So like I was saying, just here, this is where you can create hashtags for individual contacts, okay? But um, also really quickly before we move forward, let's say you just imported a bunch of contacts and you don't want to go through each of them and add a hashtag to each of them. So what you can do is you can just filter through all of those new contacts if you want to only add it to people who meet a certain criteria, or if you want to just add that hashtag to everyone, you could just check, you know, the box right next to first name. It'll select everyone on that page. And mind you, you can only select 250 people at a time. Um, if you want to add a hashtag to more than that, you might have to uh, go to the next page, select everyone, and then, you know, repeat this action. But let's say I wanted to add a hashtag to all these people I'm looking at right now. Same thing. You just check this box. It selects everyone go to more action and then add hashtag. So whatever I type in here and I click update tags, all of these people will now have this new hashtag, uh, hashtag I created. So that is a shortcut to add a hashtag to many people at once. Or you can always just click on a specific contact and uh, just add it manually uh, through the um, window that pops up when you click on their name right here. Okay, George, you have a question? Yes, sir. I, I'm very sure I'm going to forget uh, yeah. all the hashtags that I create. Is there mm -hmm. a way that I can go back and check all of the hashtags that I've ever created? For example, like I think somebody said by city or by the language they speak, and I just might yeah. forget. And what if I leave them behind? Can I see if there's a pool of where all the hashtags sit? Is that possible? Yes. Oh, man, you're on fire. These are a really great question. So if we go to, uh, I think it's marketing. So we're going to the marketing tab here, okay? Uh, if I click on that, you'll see a bunch of different boxes. Right here, if you notice, it'll say hashtag management. So you can manage, merge, and edit all of your hashtags through here. Okay, this is a bit more advanced, but um, once you get here, you can click on view hashtags, and this will show you all of the hashtags you have, as well as how many people uh, have that hashtag attributed to them. Okay, so I have all of these hashtags you see here, business, cleaning, contractor, et cetera. I can delete that hashtag and it'll remove it from all the contacts uh, it's associated with, or I could just edit and then, you know, change the name of the hashtag, uh, or I can select multiple hashtags and I can, you know, merge those hashtags by giving them, uh, you know, giving it a new name. So. You can do so many things here, but to answer your question, yes, this is where you will go to see all of that stuff. Awesome, awesome. So let's uncheck this. And uh, yeah, hopefully that answered your question, George, but this is a great resource for that. 
So let's go back to the smart CRM. I'm going to go back to my fake contacts here. Let's go back to Amy. So now we're familiar with filters. We know what hashtags do and how to add them and also how to manage them if in case you lose track of you know how many you have. Um, let me close this. So yeah, this is the hashtag space. So if you want to remove a hashtag from someone, you can just open up their contact and click the X next to it. It'll remove that hashtag. Um, and then down here, we have a, uh, a summary as far as you know what the lead has been up to, whether they've been on your website, where they came from, how they were generated, uh, when the first day they were you know signed up was. Uh, you can also click see more to see more you know import information you're probably never going to use this tab here it's it's uh yeah i never refer to this but you can check all of this information if it's important to you but next up this is one of my favorite features of kv core it's called contact validation right here okay so kv core automatically does this um, but you can also manually run a contact validation. So what is a contact validation? This might be a service some of you guys pay for, but don't know KV Core has it. So when you purchase an email list, sometimes you want to scrub through all of the emails, make sure everything is correct or, you know, it's not a, a, a you know, random email address or random phone number that might or might not work. Now, KV Core is not I don't want to say it's as powerful and as thorough as those um, third-party softwares, but by running a contact validation, what KV Core does is based on the information it already has, whether that be the name, phone number, email, or address, when I click run here, KV Core will look online um, through the web and it'll try and look up all of this information and try to find a person um, that would most likely be this contact, if that makes sense. So if Amy here had a YouTube channel or a website or a business, KV Core will look on the internet and see where it might be able to find some of that information and fill in all of the missing pieces. So let's say I didn't have an address or a number. I only had an email and a name. There's a chance that if I click run right here, KV Core will find all of that missing info on the internet and then just fill in the number and address for you. And if you only had a, um, a number and you were missing an email address based on the address, the number and the name, KV Core might be able to find an email for you online. This is absolutely free. Uh, KV Core does this automatically Sometimes it takes a while. So if when you import a contact, you can always click run here and then it'll um, tell you down here, it'll tell you, hey, this was last ran at, on this date at this time, which is right now. So no additional details were found. So this is a really nice feature to have and just to, to try out when you import contacts. You never know what you'll find. Uh, usually I get um, people's LinkedIn uh, most often than not when I run a contact validation and you can cross-reference certain information from there, or you can just reach out to the person on LinkedIn, you know? Uh, so that's a really cool thing you could do uh, with KV Core. Uh, Cecilia, you have a question? Yes, um, I didn't find on my um, KV Core, the hashtag, um, uh, I guess, manager thing. Uh, did you go to marketing, the marketing tab? I went to, oh no, I went to mar uh, Marketplace, sorry. Yeah, no, okay. it's the marketing perfect. and then you go down. Okay, You're perfect. And then the other question I have is the um, uh, the stars. You know how the rating part of it? Yes, right here. Yeah, so what is, I mean, I guess, because I've been uh, identifying the stars on there. Mm -hmm. um, but what is it, I mean, what's the purpose, I guess, of it? Is that, can I categorize it can I do you know yeah. what I mean I, other than I know that they're very much they're mm -hmm. interested no yeah I mean this this is how what I've noticed I've never actually looked up what it's for on the guide but mm -hmm. it seems to give a higher score to contacts who have more information filled out 
So if I didn't have an email, but I only had a number and the name was non-existent and there was an inaccurate email, this score would be down, maybe one or two stars. But it seems like the more information I give KV core on a person, the higher the amount of stars is. And especially when it runs an automatic contact validation and it mm -hmm. finds extra info, KV core will automatically raise the number of stars for you. But this is something you can change yourself. Okay. Um, but that that's what I think it is, at least, because that's how I've been seeing it react. But there might be a whole different thing going on here. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah that's probably what it is but you you're in control of what it does so maybe you can decide what you want to rate a five-star contact mm -hmm. and a one-star contact okay perfect okay. all right uh let's see here thank you selena you're welcome all right so we're almost there we're gonna get through these other sections fairly quickly but um yeah so you can run a contact validation here uh, down here, very straightforward. It'll tell you who owns this contact, who it's assigned to, and who you're sharing it with, because you can actually share contacts between... Uh, we can share contacts amongst ourselves if we wanted to. Uh, let's say we were in a team. Um, you can have contacts owned by someone, and maybe I can assign a contact to, to Cecilia, and maybe Cecilia can share the contact with George. So we would all be looking at the same contact, and whatever changes I make to this contact, you guys would also be notified. So there's a collaboration aspect to it too uh, that you can do on KV Core. But for most of us, we're, we're mostly solo agents. So uh, this will always just have your name on there, which is cool stuff. Uh, all right. So now let's move forward. Let's move um, to the middle section. So up here, we have the client journey. So this is something that you can either have kv core automatically change for you based on what campaign do you have because certain actions within smart campaigns can tell kv core hey after i send this email and this text on day 53 change amy's clan journey to prospect okay so let me give another example to to clarify what i'm saying so we're not going to dive too deep into smart campaigns today, but smart campaigns are basically a way for you to program certain actions that KV Core will or your CRM will do on your behalf, whether that be sending an email 30 minutes from assigning it and then sending a text and then creating a task, scheduling a call. You can have KV Core do all of that for you in the background, which is great. But another thing you can include within those campaigns is uh, automatically changing the contacts uh, status. So let's say Amy was a an active lead, okay? And maybe I have a specific campaign that I send to all of the people in my database who are active leads. So uh, through that campaign, let's say by day 58, uh, I get no response from Amy. Maybe on day 59, the last action with, within that campaign, can be to change Amy from an active lead to a prospect, okay? So that tells me that after all of these emails and text messages and tasks and calls, Amy hasn't shown any interest or, you know, replied to me, I can have KV Core automatically move her from active lead to prospect or maybe sphere, um, and, you, and you get the point. So that's one way you can have this um, automatically change. Or obviously, like I'm doing right now, let's say you want to be more hands-on with your clients. I'm in, let's say I'm in touch with Amy, and through our conversation, I gauge that Amy is actually a lead instead of a prospect. She's, she, she's showing more interest. I can open this up and then check new lead right here. And then now Amy is categorized as a new lead within the system. Okay, so all of these changes I'm making can also be... Um, set up to trigger certain things. So I can program KV Core to launch a campaign automatically whenever I change a contact status. Okay, that's getting a little bit more um, you know, uh, advanced, but these are all things you can do. And we've actually covered that, uh, I think, two Tech Tuesdays ago. But these are things we'll keep talking about. And as you keep coming into these meetings, you'll learn more and more. And you'll always have the YouTube channel as a resource. And you can book a one-on-one -on -one with me if you already know all of this stuff and you want to get to the 
the the cool stuff <laughs> you can uh, book those with me and vice versa if you don't know anything we can start from scratch through those one-on-ones and i'll take you through a kv core but this is what that is okay by me opening this up i can already tell amy is a brand new lead and i can market to her or talk to her as such but if she was closed let's say i've gone through a transaction and it closed and amy is a past client whenever i open up this contact i'll know i've done business with this person and i can just reach out and say hey how's everything going in the new property or you know wherever she went afterwards so this is a great indication of how to handle the contact okay right down there actually you'll be able to see three great pieces of information last active this week and total so this just shows you what amy's activity has been like on your website so if amy was looking at properties on my website it'll show me when the last time that was uh, how many properties she's viewed you know this week and in total since amy got added to my database how many properties has she seen okay so you get that information up here um and then down here you'll be able to also track the chats between you and amy and remember the chat is for the uh, kv core app okay so any communication within the kv core app you can check here and then down here you have the timeline okay let me zoom out so the timeline is very simple it just shows you all of the different actions that have been taking place between you and that lead so if i scroll all the way down here it'll be uh, from the most recent up top to the first interaction all the way at the bottom okay so i added amy on november 29th at this time and then you can trace all of the things that have been going on with Amy. I sent her an email this day. You can click view and you can see what email you sent Amy. Um, right next to the emails that were sent, this is also a really good feature. You can see whether or not someone has opened up the email you've sent or not. This might, this is not 100% accurate, but um, sometimes you will be able to see when someone opened an email and what email it was so it looks like this email was me sending amy a search you know property a list of properties okay so now i can call amy and say hey amy have you you know i see that you you got my email with the properties i sent you what do you think about them do you want to go see them you know etc cetera, etc cetera. so you can use that information to do a warm call instead of a cold call uh yeah so timeline straightforward you could just see everything that's been going on in chronological order you can see the notes you've taken tasks you've set calls if you're using kv core to make calls it'll log that for you um and all that great stuff okay so this is the middle section and then last but not least we have the I want to say arguably the most important tab <laughs> uh, most important section the actions tab and then down here we'll get to these really shortly here we're almost done so the actions tab speak for themselves you can place a call directly from here this will use your uh, smart number so kv core does give you a phone number that's different than your you know your personal phone number that you can use to call with and the great thing about that number is whoever calls that number to kv core will know and will log it on your kv core dashboard so anyone that calls your smart number you can track that call on here and then get back to the person it's really really nice so i could click new call and then you know i can click call now and then it will launch a call to amy and what this does is this will call your phone so if i click call now it will call my personal cell phone so i'll get a call here on my phone um actually I'm, i i was gonna do it <laughs> but you, you'll get a call here and then it'll tell you to press a button to connect you with whichever lead it was you were you know trying to press call on so it doesn't call on the computer itself okay i get a question about this all the time so if i click call now my phone will ring first it'll say hey click any button to get connected to your lead and then once I tap that button 
then that call gets launched. But the number Amy will see will be my smart number, okay, instead of my personal cell phone number. So KV Core is the in-between man. They call me, and then I press a button, and then I get routed on a three-way uh, with uh, KV Core, if you will. Uh, when I said that, I saw a bunch of uh, two hands go up. Cecilia, <laughs> what's the question? Actually, mine was, uh, yeah, uh, I'm okay there. It's My okay. question was on the transfer of um, uh -huh. you know, on the transfer section when okay. you're transferring a contact. Um, yes. I received a transfer from another agent. Okay. And I accepted it. But what, what happened when it transferred is that that agent was also sending alerts to that same client that she transferred. Oh, okay. So how how do you avoid that? Because he, he was getting double alerts. You know, he was getting my alerts and her alerts. Yeah, with that, um, you would just have the agent that shared it uh, switch off the campaign they're on. Because there's a lot of sub settings because you can transfer contacts with certain conditions too. You can transfer where only you now have control over all the marketing or you can transfer okay. where both of you guys can still take action. So you might have to reach out to the party that transferred it for them to turn off the campaign they have going on. So she would have to turn off her campaign. Yeah, she would have to, to turn off on her side most likely. Okay, and then that by doing that, does that allow her to still see my notes and see the progress yeah. with that? Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Perfect. So that that will work for sure. Okay, perfect. And then my other question was, um, yep. if I wanted to delete um, contacts, yeah, I would do a hashtag delete, um, and then do sort them out by by that hashtag, and then delete them all. Is that yeah. how I do it? Yeah, if you want to delete multiple contacts, you can okay. you know, select all of those contacts or you can filter through all of them and then just select all of them like this. Mm -hmm. And then if you go to the more actions tab, delete contacts is here. So you could just do that. Okay, because I've tried that, but it keeps them still there. I mean, it's the uh, up here and I don't it, know why. If you delete a lot of them at once, they won't go away immediately. Sometimes it takes a few minutes and you might need to refresh the page. Uh, but I've had that happen and other people have told me about that too. So you oh, just okay. delete once, wait a few minutes and then refresh mm -hmm. and you should mm -hmm. see them um, uh, be gone. Okay, perfect. Thanks. Yes, you're welcome. Uh, I think I have another question from George. Yes, sir. When you showed us a part about making a call, Yes. Uh, this is my second time around with exp yeah. um so, you know so of course we have the kv core when you're mm -hmm. going to make a new call i understand about you know the the phone rings and you got the connection but yeah. the first time that i was here you had to buy your own phone number to make phone calls so it's no longer necessary to buy your own number so yes and no you can still buy your phone number uh but now what I don't know what it was like before, but now KV Core assigns a smart number for you that gets rotated between all of the agents in your office. So you might have a smart number now, but maybe in a week or two, it'll change to another number. So if you want the same number, you have to opt in for that, you know, paid subscription. For example, yeah. write a subscription. Let's say I wanted to post that number on a on a business card. So then I would have to buy I my would own number. Definitely pay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Definitely. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, let's see. Can you send a video via text to multiple contacts? Yes, you can do that. Uh, however, the video messaging feature, um, after you, there's a cap on the number of contacts, you can simultaneously send videos to. If you want to do more, I think that is a paid uh, feature on there to answer your question, Selena. So, yeah, I think you can only do one at a time. Uh, if not, looks like it's about $30 a month to make that happen. Oh, there it is. Yeah. So, but that's a great feature, though. Um, a lot of people are not comfortable with video and video is taking over right now. So I encourage every agent to be more comfortable recording content, post those on social media. And um, yeah. Yeah. If, if that's something that you want to do, I would maybe opt in for the subscription. 
Let's see. Yeah, definitely, George. Great uh, share. A lot of us use um, software like Red X. I used Mojo Dialer for a long time. Uh, so I would definitely be open to doing something like that. That is a great idea. Um, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions, anyone? Awesome. We're looking good. So we're almost done with this section and I'll let you guys go, I promise. So you can launch a new call from here. You can also add notes. So let's say you had an interaction with a client and you want to make sure you remember, you can click add notes and then you can type up, you know, whatever was going on. And then uh, you can CC your lender. If you have a lender on file, you can pin this note at the top. So if you don't want the note to get lost in that chronological order of things, you can actually pin notes up top so they never, you know, get lost. So I can click add note here. And uh, now see that note is up at the top right here. Custom notes, whatever I typed. You can pin, you can edit this note, or you can delete this note. And you can send an email straight from here. You know, I can type up an email that'll go straight to Amy. You can uh, send a text message by clicking here. You can type your message and you can also add an MLS ID if you're texting about a specific listing. And then you can send that. Um, you can do voicemail drop. This is a paid feature. I never used it, but you can just go straight to the inbox and leave voicemails if you want to do that instead of calling. You can send videos. Core Present is a very cool feature that we definitely don't have time to talk about, but this allows you to build listing presentations, buyer presentations, and send them directly to your contacts. And this is for free, so it's pretty cool. You also have access to more actions. You can add a task, you can share the contact, you can transfer, and a bunch of other stuff you can do through here. I encourage you to um, you know, click on this and see what all you can do with KV Core. Down here, uh, concierge follow-up is also a paid feature. Um, it's just having the KV Core team or you know this third party, this other company reach out to your leads for you. I never tried it, but that's a feature. Down here, you can add property alerts You know to have recurring emails being sent to your leads uh, with specific properties that they might be looking for. And you're in control of all the criteria you set, okay? So we're going we're not going to go too deep into this but um we actually talked about this also it's on the YouTube channel but you could do that through here by clicking um you know add alert you can add campaigns you can add market reports if i click add right here you can type in a location and then click um uh change the the frequency at which you send those reports and then you can click add so let's say I can just type Los Angeles in here, just like so. It'll load up with that location. Maybe. Let's, oh, there it is. Oh, Los Angeles. Take some time to load sometimes, but um, there it is. So, oop, I missed it again. <laughs> but once you type in a location here, you choose it from the drop down and then choose your, there it is. So Los Angeles area, you can choose to have this be sent every seven days, 14 days, 21 or 28. And then you click add. And now every 14 days, Amy will receive an email with a market report for Los Angeles. Pretty, pretty cool stuff. Core present, again, this allows you to um, create listing presentations and, and all of that fun stuff. Um, and then last, but well, not last, listing valuation. Through here, you can put Amy's address or, you know, uh, the if, if you entered into a contract with Amy to list her property, you can send her a listing valuation by putting her address right here. So if I was to X this out, I can go here, click add, and then put Amy's property address, click save. And then she'll receive an email with you know an approximation of her home value. You can also add a seller report uh, through the MLS ID. And last but not least, you can send an invite to Amy to download the uh, KV Core app straight through here. Okay, so this 
right here is what the smart CRM section is and has to offer and how to operate it. Do we have any questions, Cecilia? Uh, yeah, you reminded me about the lender part of it because I have a lender and I asked, um, I'm not sure, uh, someone in the KV Core yeah. uh, to add them into KV Core. Yes. And I can't seem to find them. How, how do I connect them to, to me? How do I connect my lender yeah. to my KV Core? So uh, great question. That is something I was looking into and I found out you might have to actually go into the world and uh, talk to, I don't know the, I forgot the name of the specific department or resource, but right here, if you see my screen, I'll click on my name okay. and I'll go to uh, lenders. Okay. So once you go there, there should be a button here that says add lender, but it doesn't show for uh, us because we don't have the full version of KV Core apparently. So if you want a lender to populate under here that you're working with, mm -hmm. uh, that's something you would need to go into the world and let, mm -hmm. um, uh, I, I forgot the name of the resource. It's probably the customer service area or something like that, or some, some office in the world. Let them know who your lender is and they can um, give you the information to populate that on there. So I haven't done it myself just yet, but there should be a button here for it, which we don't have access to. Okay, yeah, because yeah. I did, I did go in the world and I requested they they asked me to provide them the information, and I did. Yeah. Now I can't. I'm. I can't seem to. Yeah. I'm it's... there now and doesn't. I don't find her on here. Yeah. Oh, you typed her name and she doesn't pop up. No. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it shows you a bunch of people, but yeah, right. for specific people, uh, I just go around it by having a link to um, my lender's, you know, website, but mm -hmm. if you want it through KV Core, you do have to go through that channel, you know? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I want to be able to have her um, see my communication with the client. Yeah. So that is a great question. And I, a lot of people are asking me, so I think I'm going to do it myself and uh, I'll email you and, you know, everyone um, through a newsletter or something on how to do it step by step. OK, OK, perfect. Thank you. you're welcome. Um, oh, I have one more question here. So this is a great one too, Selena. How do you synchronize all of your contacts from your phone? There's multiple ways to do this, uh, but because we're uh, out of time, I'll show you the quick way. If you click on the mail icon at the top of KV Core right here, and also this is going to depend on whether you have a um, an iPhone or an Android. There's multiple ways you can import your contacts from your phone. But if you have a Gmail account on your iPhone, um, your contacts should be synchronized through your Gmail account. So when you click on the mail icon here, you should see I'm going to disconnect my Google here. So in case your yours is not connected. So you should see this connect a Google mail account or connect an Outlook mail account. So by me clicking on connect Google account and signing into Google, once I do that, I'll actually do it right now. Let's log in. And then it'll ask for the permission. I'll click allow. So once you connect your Google account, uh, KV Core will refresh, and then you should be able to click back on this mail icon, go to Google settings, and then you can click switch this button right here where it says contacts, ongoing syncing, just switch this on. Sync all Google contacts into KV Core, and then you can push always, so it'll always continually sync. And right here, all the contacts that will be imported as a result you can choose what they're labeled as. So do you want them to get imported as sphere, prospect, you know, active lead? Since they're phone contacts, they'll most likely be sphere. So you can leave that here and then save and then wait 15 to 30 minutes and you'll see them start coming in. But there's other ways to do it. Uh, do send me an email or give me a phone call and we can talk about how to do it manually, okay? But this is one way you can make that happen. All right, you're welcome. Any other questions, anyone? Awesome, I think we're looking good.
Um, let's see if I have anything else. Yeah, that was everything. Thank you so much for watching. Here's my phone number and email and a website where you can make one-on-one uh, -on -one, one -on -one bookings. If that's everything, we'll see you tomorrow for comps class with Renee. Enjoy your night, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Coach Kane. You're welcome, welcome.